Hey all, it's Dylan here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the DLive Actions function and control it via MIDI using a Stream Deck, using either the Companion app or the Elgato Stream Deck application. So here I am on a S5000 Allen & Heath DLive and I have a Stream Deck uh, that's currently running the Companion software. But just so you're aware, you can also do this using the native Stream Deck uh, application as well. So first thing I'm going to do is set up a few really simple actions. So going to the surface window, going to actions, I'm going to add a new action and this one's going to be called DCA up. So I'm going to add a new function and the function is going to be to set the main level of all of the DCAs that I have here on the surface and set it to an absolute level of zero dB. Cool. I'm going to duplicate this and call this one DCA mid and duplicate it again and call this one DCA down. Really simple function that's just going to show you the movement happening uh, as I trigger it via MIDI through the Stream Deck. Um, and what I'm going to do also is edit the DCA mid, so the absolute level will be minus 10 dB, and I'm going to edit the DCA down action and make it um, negative infinity. Okay, so uh, when we actually trigger this, you'll actually see the betas you know, go down uh, or go back up, depending on what message we're sending there. I've already got a link between the console and the computer. So if I open the Allen & Heath MIDI control app, you can see that I'm connected to the DLive mix rack uh, on the specified IP address, and you can see I've actually got a connection there. It says connected. Cool. Firstly, you want to check what the DLive is set to in terms of its main MIDI channels that it responds to. So if you go to Utility, Control, there you can see main MIDI channels, and mine's set from 1 to 5, but by default, the DLive responds to channels 12 to 16. So I've just kind of changed mine with my setup to respond to a different channel. So in the Companion software, I have a connection already set up, and what I've done is created just a really simple generic MIDI module. And the MIDI in and the MIDI out is that the MIDI driver that's created by the Allen and Heath MIDI application. So MIDI control one is the in, MIDI control one is the MIDI out as well. So this is my connection between the MIDI module of Companion and the DLive console. So I'm gonna create a new button. So create button and what I'm gonna do is assign a press action and assign that to the module that I've created, the MIDI uh, module, the generic MIDI, uh, which is linked to the console that I've already set up. Now, actions in the DLO, they respond to control change messages. So what I'm gonna do is create a control change message that's associated with that button. Okay, I'm gonna call this one. It's gonna be the same as what I've created in the DLO. It's gonna be called DCA up. So a really simple button um, that's going to send a control change message and the defaults here are that it's going to send on channel 1, the controller number is going to be 127 and the value is going to be 0. This is the default. You can set up any protocol that works in your in your in your favor so i could set it to channel five i could set it to, con to controller one or controller zero whatever you like the way that you set it up here does not matter it just means that you need to uh, apply the same message from the stream deck uh, into the console itself to make it easy what i'm going to do is duplicate this button twice the same way that i did for my actions okay this one's going to be called dca mid this one's going to be called dca down you can now see those three buttons sitting there on the stream deck. Now, I also needed to change the message for those. So I've got channel one, controller 127, um, zero is the value for up. I'm gonna make one the value for mid, and I'm gonna make two the value for down. Really simple, just assigning control change messages at various values um, for the console to respond to. Okay, so if I go across now to the console and I hit the MIDI recall button that's within the actions function, this now allows me to choose what uh, control change message will respond to which action. So in the control number, whatever what I've set in the stream deck is that my control number is going to be controller 127 uh, that responds to DCA up and the value that responds to the DCA up action is going to be zero, which is what I've set here. Now mid, I've done the same thing, controller number 127, but the value is gonna be one, and down is gonna be controller number 127, value is two. So it basically tells us that DCA up action is gonna be listening and triggered by control value zero, and so on, so on, O, one, and two for those three functions. I apply that. As I press this button and uh, fire that message, the control change message between um, you know, the stream deck, the computer, the console, we should see the messages trigger, which is gonna make these faders move. So um, DCA, DCA up means that our absolute value is gonna be zero. DCA mid means that our DCA value is gonna be at minus 10. And DCA down means that our level is gonna be down at negative infinity. Cool. 
So I've just created three buttons there using control train messages that respond to the three actions that I've created within the console. And that's it. Now for the native Elgato Stream Deck application, uh, there are two plugins that you can use. There's the MIDI plugin and there's the MIDI button plugin. So I've got them both installed and I'll show you how to set either of them up to uh, correspond to working with the DLive console. All right, in the native Stream Deck app, I've set up a few buttons. So firstly, on the right hand side here, I've got uh, dragged in the um, control change message. Uh, and that's the three that I've got at the top and that's from the MIDI plugin. And from the MIDI button plugin, I've got the MIDI CC or MIDI control change function. I've dragged those in as well. So three buttons for each. Now for the first one, just to give you an idea on how I've set this up. So call this one up. It's corresponding to the same messages that I've set previously in the console. So MIDI channel number one, which is, as I said before, not the default MIDI channel of the console, but it's one that I've chosen the console to uh, respond to. Control message that I'm sending is on um, 100, is 127. Now you can see as you go through this list, um, it shows you the names of a bunch of different kind of generic control change messages. I'm disregarding all of that. I'm using just number 127 as my command number. And the values uh, down the bottom here is what you're going to correspond to in terms of the actions that you've set. So um, my up message is zero, my mid message is one, and my down message is two. Now, the other thing you need to also set in this particular um, window here is the MIDI ports. And of course, it's gonna to correspond to the Allen and Heath um, MIDI control one driver that's set up once you've connected that driver to the, to the console. So of course, now as I, as I have these buttons set, you can see that I can you know, change easily the mid and down messages. These are fired uh, just as per before. Now back to the Stream Deck plugin again, or the Stream Deck application. Um, if we're using the MIDI button plugin, um, it's very, very similar. Um, MIDI channel number one, as I said. Now the control change message, the interesting part about this is that the first 119 or so are labeled, but the next ones aren't labeled with numbers. But this one down the bottom, the poly operation is also corresponding to um, the control change message number 127 and of course the values are here um, as per before, zero for the up message, um, one for the mid message and two for the down message. You can now see these functional here in the same way the other ones were both on the other plugin as well as the companion app. That's how you control actions using MIDI fired from the Stream Deck.